CataractCoach.com resident pit and chop technique. So let's give some advice for improvement for this resident surgery. Group effort here. We're going to need your comments below. So pretty good cataract there. Tripan blue dye going in. Looks like surgeon sitting superiorly. Now holding out the viscous cannula, here's the incision. That all looks pretty reasonable. Let's see that Rex is. Now it does not look like an intumescent white cataract. So I don't think we'll have an issue with Argentina flag sign. Patient looks like under topical anesthesia. And so there's not much akinesia there. Patient's moving the eye a bit. Systome to start it. No egress of lens milk or liquefied lens cortex. So probably very low risk of Argentina flag sign. Here comes the rexus. Let's see the pivoting in the incisions. Pretty good. Look at the pivoting there. Nice, generous rexus. I like that this is not a baby rexus. As you know, cataract coach says, no baby rexus. You don't want a baby rexus, especially with a dense nucleus like this. This has got some pretty good density to it. Now, letting a little viscoelastic out and very gentle on the hydro dissection. The reason is, of course, you can't see the fluid wave. The lens is so opaque, you really can't see the fluid wave at all. There it is, rotating quite nicely. I like that. We've sped the video up, obviously, to three times normal speed. A little more viscoelastic to protect the corneal endothelium. And let's see the technique here. So this pit and chop technique is to create a little bit of a pit. Kind of like we learned from Mohanta's submarine chop, of making a little pit there in order to really get the phaco tip buried within the dense central part of the nucleus. So again, making a little pit, there it is, just a little bit of energy. Once that pit's created, now go to high vacuum, embed the phaco probe, and there you can try to get a vertical chop. Ooh, look at that nucleus. You can see a little bit of fibrotic change there, a little bit of leatheriness to it. doesn't want to separate fully. Taking your time there. Oh, nice horizontal chop now. So I like this little versatile chop. We did a you know, vertical chop, horizontal chop, combo chop, any chop you want. And so this looks really good. You can see the squirt bottle cannula that keeps blocking our view. That's probably the attending or the professor giving some advice. So very nicely done, young surgeon. I just wish the attending wouldn't keep blocking your view. So now taking out these first these chunks here, beautiful chop technique here. Notice how the eye stay in primary. Notice how the draping is good. Notice how there are no eyelashes touching the cornea. I like it. I like it. So so far, what are my pearls for improvement? I mean, nothing so far. It's pretty darn good. Just rack up more and more experience. Very nicely done. Taking out the pieces of the first heavy nucleus. There we go. All cleaned up. Good pivoting technique here as well. Let's see what we're going to do now. More viscoelastic. Bravo. So a little more viscoelastic in the bag, maybe to protect the endothelium again. Now there's more viscoelastic. Protect the endothelium too. Also a little bit of extra viscoelastic in the bag. It's going to help keep the bag a little bit more stable as you get the last piece out. Remember, there's no cortex here really, very little. There's no epinucleus. It's all this big, dense nucleus. And there's a chop again. Take these pieces out. Sub-chop again. The chopping technique, you got it down. Now, I know, listen, you can do divide and conquer as your home, you know, flavor, what you like doing every time. That's your preference. Go for it. But, you know, in my history of teaching residents, any resident who could learn chop like this, really ends up preferring it. And it's more fun. Now, could this resident who's operating do divide and conquer? Yes, you can. And if you're doing that, that's okay too. It's whatever you like. But I encourage you, just try to learn it. It's a really neat thing. If you try it, you learn fake chop, you say, you know, I still want to go back to some other technique, then go for it. But in my experience, I think if you try it, you'll love it. And you can see how efficient this is, all these pieces coming down. Really, this patient's going to have a beautifully clear corner the next day. This is one of the magical things in ophthalmology. What was the pre-op vision? Hand motion, or maybe if you move your hand fast enough, wind perception. And what's the post-op vision going to be? Great. 2020. 6-6. Six, six. Hey, check out Cataract Coach Podcast. Yeah, we have a great podcast every Sunday. You will love it. You can watch it on YouTube, but you'll listen to it on any podcast service. Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. Whatever you like, you will learn so much. Our goal of the podcast is to give you great insights in ophthalmology and teach you all the secrets for success. Yes, we have to make sure the young generation is very successful. Now, by uh, coaxial, no, coaxial, yeah, there you go, not by manual, coaxial, irrigation aspiration, cleaning up that capsule bag. Listen, this is a great resident. You've done a fantastic job. At this point, I think you just need to keep learning on your own and advancing your skills and rack up more and more experience. And let me ask you a question. Though. Look behind the posterior capsule. Yeah, yeah, what do you see? Well, there's a little flex back there. Little tiny bits of lens fragments. So maybe this patient has some degree of zonulopathy here. So going in here, yeah, I'd enlarge the incision. Don't just shove it. Eh, again, I'd really prefer you have a little bit bigger incision or do a wound assist technique. There we go. Good idea. Remember, I'm watching the video for the first time with you. 
slightly large, enlarging the incision is probably your best bet here instead of causing a decimate attachment. But yeah, those little fragments there in the anterior face, that's little bits of lens material due to some sort of zonulopathy here, and you got little lens fragments going through, little gaps. Now here comes the single piece acrylic lens, get that in the capsule bag. Oh, going behind the eye well to remove visco Alaska like that. Good job here. And again, we've spent the video up to 3x normal speed. So the video is uh, maybe a little under six minutes, and so the video is, uh, let's say, 17, 18 minutes. So beautifully done here, cleaning up all that cortex and seal up the incisions and give this patient plenty of anti-inflammatory post-op because you're going to have a little bit of inflammatory reaction there. But beautifully done. Hey, check out me on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube. You know the results. Check it out.